Okay, so this time we're going to take a look at a particular star and once again do an example of looking at the analysis process. So here is our new version of the target list second set XLXS or XLSX uh, file. And um, I've got a star here. We're just going to choose from random. This is a, a type A spectral type number 6106152. Copy that. We're going to go to the NASA Exoplanet Archive, Exoplanet Transit Survey Kepler search page, which by now you have bookmarked. We're going to paste it in there, make sure there are no spaces, and we're going to say View. And off it goes. And it brings back the visible data sets that we have. I'm going to make this slightly larger so that you can see what's going on. And you can see that there are uh, a count of total of 50, 15, sorry, 15 um, different recordings of data. And the last one is a short cadence, so we are not going to look at the last one in this case because we're going to look at long cadence values only. So in this case, we're looking at quarter 16, sh long cadence information. And it brings back the data for this. And of course, it naturally changes it back to quarter zero, which is not what we want. But it's always a kind of interesting to look at what's going on there. The star is definitely variable in some way, shape, or form. Let's go down to number 16 here, long cadence, and say update the plot. We update the plot, and uh, you can see that there's other stuff going on here, and which is why they are looking at a a short cadence study because it looks like there are these little dips in here which may be indicative of things orbiting around the planet. These could very easily be um, an exoplanet but also the star seems to be pulsating. It's got a nice smooth pulsing activity here or maybe it's rotational. So let's see if we can get some more information. We click on the periodogram phase curve tab. Tell it to use down here number 16 um, long and then we tell it to compute a periodogram. We say, yeah, we can we can stand by and wait, go get a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, some hot cocoa, talk to your friends, work on other homework, and eventually it will give us what we're looking for. And I suspect we'll see something that's pretty periodic. It could be a pulsing star, but since the amplitude of the pulses are not very consistent, it's unlikely that it's a pulsator. It's more likely a rotator with some heavy star spot activity or some other type of thing going on. But so, ah, look at that. So now we see a very strong period of just under 10, um, 10 days. And if you scroll down and look, you'll see that there's a period of 8.151876 day. And let's click on phased curve and check it out. Yeah, look at that. That's actually very pretty. And I'm now much more inclined to think that that's a pulsator. But look in there. You'll see these little dips in here, which could be indicative of a planet. I'm not quite sure what those are all about yet, but it uh, looks like we've got a pulsating variable here of 8.151876 day right here. If you are so inclined, you can close that, and we can close this, and we can say, you know, I'm, I'm kind of interested in the short short duration information. Let's see if we can get a periodogram for that. Not quite sure what we're going to get, but this is why we're doing this project, to, s to see what we can get. That's where all the excitement comes in. Once again, you can go get a cup of tea, coffee, hot cocoa, talk to your neighbors, do some extra homework somewhere else, because eventually this will come back with some information. You'll also notice that the short cadence data take a longer time to process than the long cadence data, and that's because there's so much more per day. It's collecting a lot more short cadence information. So it takes the computer system over at the uh, NASA Exoplanet Archive a little extra time to get this stuff done. In the meantime, I'm going to wind my watch. 
We're now over a minute. Watch has been wound. I'm going to set the time, which is now 4.43 p.m. And it looks like there's a period there. That's interesting. And interestingly enough, it's the same period. So let's take a look at the phased curve for it. Very close. It's just over eight days. Yeah, so there's definitely a pulsating variable. We're just not quite sure what these things are. We may have to investigate that at some later date. But that's a very interesting star. 8.21 day period on this star. So you could call it a pulsator. And that's just a second example of the type of data we'll be analyzing. And I'm not quite sure this has a planet or not. But maybe we'll take a look at this in class and find out. Thank you for watching.